Hello, this is part two of the Two Wheel Balancing Robot Project, sponsored by LG's X-Boom Go Bluetooth speakers. This robot's got an LG X-Boom PK7 speaker as its head, and it's going to have two smaller speakers, the PK3s, in its body. Also available is the PK5, so don't forget to check out part one for more information on that and to see the build so far. Last time I got most of the mechanical assembly done and we had rudimentary balancing set up and in this video we're going to make it radio controlled so we can drive it all around, fit its arms and fit its body panels and then we'll see what we can do with it. So just to recap we've got a CNC aluminium and aluminium extrusion frame which is bolted together with 3D printed mechanical parts that hold all of the drive assembly. We've got an O-Drive robotics brushless motor driver, two brushless motors with encoders on so they can be positioned really accurately and a Teensy 3.6 in the top. And that is running a PID controller using a pot at the moment for the set point to get the angle of balancing perfectly right, an MPU6050 accelerometer and gyro which is the input to our PID controller and then we're of course driving the wheels with the output. We've also got a radio chip which is one of the NRF24 LO1s to receive remote data. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And here's the remote control which is a 3D printed box with two joysticks. With these are actually three axis joysticks that rotate as well as moving in two axis, but we're only actually going to use two axis from each one. Inside is the Arduino Mega from my little test setup last time. That of course has the other NRF24 LO1 linked to it, so we can read the pots with the analog ins and send the data straight over to the robot. So all I've done with the remote is actually modifying that set point, so we've got the little trim pot, but we're also adding a value from this stick. So as I push the stick forward, it should lean forward because it thinks it's underbalancing, and that makes it drive forward, and as I push it back, it should go backwards again, so that seems to work pretty well. And then to turn on the spot, all we're doing is completely at the end, after all of the PID controllers and everything else, we're just adding some value to one wheel and taking it off the other wheel with a centre point of zero. So if I hit this stick sideways, we should find it turns on the spot. And if you're really careful, it's possible to drive in a curved line as well. A bit like that. We still need to do a bit of tuning on this as we put more mass on. We've still got the arms to go on, but that's actually pretty all right now. Um, it's kind of okay if it crashes into things as well, so it's pretty stable, it can bump stuff and it will just um, sort of rebound and drive in the other direction fortunately. So there we go, let's just give that a little spin. So yeah, that seems to work pretty well. Yes, it's the arms. So we've got these elbows which can be posed. They've just got a bolt through so we can pose those. But the shoulders are going to have motors in and of course the arm fits to a hub and the hub fits onto this piece that mounts on the robot and that's got a really big bearing in so that should be nice and super. But we don't want the arms to snap off or the gearbox to break if the robot happens to fall over or bump into something. So we're going to use a special clutch that couples the hub to the servo that drives it. So we've got a couple of servos for the arms which are 20 kilogram metal gear servos and we've got these plates attached with magnets on. So if I move the remote now, we can move those plates all around. There's a couple of power supplies hiding up here, one for each servo, and those are 5 amp regulators, and those are powered from the main battery of the robot. So those magnetic plates are of course fitted into the arm socket, and we've got that bearing there to mount the arm on. And the arm's got a corresponding set of magnets, so that should just snap on, and that should work pretty well. And if we crash, of course, the arm will just snap off on the magnets, and it won't break the servo. Of course there are two of those, and we can move them backwards and forwards with one stick, and if I move it sideways, then it moves one arm back and one arm forward. Now if I move them both forwards and wiggle that, we can do that in various positions just by mixing those servos together. I've added a control panel around the back, so we've got a big emergency stop which resets the O-Drive, so that just pulls the reset pin low and cuts the motors off. We've got a switch to initialize the motors, one for motor enable, which is a software switch, which just sets the velocity to zero if it's switched. That means I can pick up the robot and move it around if we need to without the wheels spinning away. We've also got a voltage readout for the main battery, so we can keep an eye on it. So altogether, I think that's looking pretty good, but now we need to put all of the rest of the body panels on, so we better get printing.
We've got a panel with magnetic snaps that fits in just here so I can still get to the batteries. And two more around the back. And I've also fitted two LG X-Boom PK3 speakers in its chest there. So that's the whole thing built, but now it's together, what sort of things can we do with it? Well, you could use it to deliver cups of tea. Thank you. But using the voice command feature, you can pair it with your phone and turn it into a smart speaker. Robot, play some disco music. Well, I hope you enjoyed the disco. Thanks again to LG for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the LG X-Boom Go series of speakers, the PK7, the PK5, and the PK3s. If you like robots, don't forget to subscribe for more robot builds like this. All right, that's all for now.